Elon Musk and XAI released Grok 4 this past week, and in this video we're going to test how well it can code using our standard code test where we make it code games like Grand Theft Auto, Minecraft, Angry Birds, and Subway Surfers. If you are new around here, welcome, and if you go to the Franklin A website and if you scroll down, there is something called AI Code Test, and from here we have our different standard code tests, so we are going to start with Minecraft. And you can see the prompt here that we are going to feed it, you're an expert game developer tasked with creating a simplified game inspired by Minecraft. And anyway, the prompt just goes on to say the constraints, requirements, and everything else. So we can actually just copy this prompt and put it into Grok 4. Unfortunately, I don't actually have Grok 4, but fortunately I have friends that do. You can see here we have Super Grok in the background running. That is our standard prompt that we use for Minecraft, and we use this prompt in the other large language models, and I'm going to show you what the output was for those. But you can actually see Grok 4 generating an output, and because this is a recording that my friend has sent, and shout out to What's Up Frank, and you can follow him, I'll have a link in the description below, but you can actually see it says designing game mechanics. and it is searching for different things that it needs. We're gonna kind of just jump ahead. It's looking for online results and chunk generation for blocks. Again, we want it to build a Minecraft-like game. So you can actually see the controls, how long it took, 117 seconds. So my friend was nice enough to send us this for each generation as well as the code that matches the generation itself. Now instead of showing you Super Grok generate code, let's just look at the final output because that is really what I am interested in. We are on the Minecraft test, we can go to code, and this is the code that Grok4 has given us, and you can kind of scroll through, you can go through the entire code, you can copy it, whatever you want to do. We can also hit preview and we can see what it looks like. And you're going to notice a trend with Grok4, so interact and you will see an error and it just infinitely loads. And that's not what we want. We want it to work, but the way this test works is it is one shot prompt. It is one prompt we put in, whatever the output is, whatever the output is. We aren't going to modify the code any for our baseline. So if we go back in time and we look at Grok 3, you can see what Grok 3 has given us versus Grok 4. So Grok 4 was non-working at all, where Grok 3 gave us this thing here. So you can actually see the different models and what they have given us. So here is Gemini 2.5 Pro, and you can see that we have something that is a functional Minecraft game in comparison to Grok 4 that just breaks. I am a software developer, so I have gone through the code and I did some minor tweaks and honestly, it wasn't that far off. This is Grok 4 now. It was missing brackets and semicolons, but you can kind of see what happens. The camera angle is very glitchy, but anyway, this is the closest I can get to making it work without changing the code too much. This system allows me to check different builds at different times so we can see Perplexity Labs, for example, doing the same exact thing and we can see how that one works. So I don't think Grok did a good job because it just didn't work at all. We needed to modify the code to get it to run and function. Maybe Minecraft wasn't Grok's jam. Up next, we're going to try Angry Birds. And if you're enjoying content like this and you wanna stay up to date with the latest and greatest AI, don't forget to click the subscribe button. I cover AI on a daily basis. So our prompt for Angry Birds was rather simple. Create a single file, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Angry Bird inspired game. I want to have a menu, screen, level selector, and 10 levels. So again, you can see the code that Grok has given us and we can go to preview and you're going to notice that there is nothing working. That is the trend with Grok. So zero for two. And if we go back, I don't have Grok 3 in my history, but we can actually see like Claude 4.0 Sonnet. We can see Angry Birds. We can select a level and we can see our bird with different things. I remember this one now. It didn't exactly work. The closest we ever got was actually Gemini 2.5 Pro with shapes, and this one was an actual fully functional game. I had a lot of fun going through it. It keeps track of the birds at the top left, and we can kind of shoot the birds off. But just like before, I want to see what the Grok Angry Birds looks like if we were to modify the code. So after a little bit back and forth, 
this is the closest I can get to making it work. So you can see here what it looks like, but you can't actually shoot the bird far enough to hit green circle. So that's the closest I get to making it work by fixing the syntax errors that Grok has given us. But technically speaking, the initial code, again, the way we are benchmarking this is the first code that it gives us with no modification. And this is what it gives us. All right, Grok, you got this subway surfers with cars. Here is the subway surfers with car prompt. If you want to see it, just go to the website. You can check it out. Here is the Grok code and here is the preview. This is disappointing. All the benchmarks said that Grok 4 was the best, that it was smarter than college graduates in nearly every field. What is going on? It can't code any of the games. It always has syntax errors. I have to go through and fix the problems and the mistakes that it gives. Elon said that this is better than Cursor. This is just really sad and disappointing. By comparison, here is Flash 2.5. And you can see our game here. We can go back and forth. We have some clouds and eventually there will be some things in the way and you can see they are upcoming. We can see our score. It still has like a safe value property binding error, but we have a functional game. Does it look great? No, but it functions. If we want to see Claude 4.0, Sonnet, we can actually see our game here and this one also functions and this one's actually pretty challenging and pretty fun. So this is two versions that are functional versus Grok that gives us nothing. So just like before, I did some modification to their code and this is the closest I can get it to working. So let's hit restart. You can see my car, I can go back and forth, but I have no idea where I am driving on. Again, I only fix the syntax errors rather than modifying any of the code. So I didn't want to throw it into a large language model to modify the code. I wanted to just fix the syntax errors to at least see what it was trying to make. At the end of the day, it wasn't able to make any of the games on the first shot like the other models in the past. Even Grok 3 gave us something usable. The ultimate test, GTA, and our prompt says, I want to create a single file GTA inspired game. And because it is a single file, you think Grok excels here because Elon Musk said, throw all your code in, that is in a single file into Grok because that's how code is totally written all in a single file and use threes to make it 3D. And I wanna have the ability to run around, jump out of cars that are moving around a downtown city. It should be 3D, try to make it look as good as possible by using only shapes. So once again, you can see the code that Grok has spit out and our preview. So this one here took actually a substantial amount of modification because there was a ton of missing little brackets and different things to make it functional. And even still, it is not great. So I can move the cursor around, but the way I move the cursor, the character always goes the way it wants to. Directional buttons on the keyboard doesn't really function very well. And you can kind of see the windows of the building are off. You can jump, if I can see myself here, you can jump and if I can find a car, I'll show you what the car looks like. So it took way too long to get on a car and that is because the buttons are funky, the directional buttons, because if I press going forward and I move the cursor around, I expect for the character to still go forward, but no, it stays in the direction it wants to go. But you can kind of see I am in a car now and it kind of works. We can hop out of the car. Let me just move back here. Let's hop out of the car and the car just teleports. We can jump. This is Grand Theft Auto that it gave us after I modified the code myself. And just so you can see the other models. So Minimax Agent was absolutely crazy. This was a single prompt. So you can see this one actually runs properly and we can actually jump in a car. You can see the status. We're on foot. I'm just going to exit out. We can see Gemini Diffusion, which generated it extremely fast, but it was also broken. By comparison, this is Gemini 2.5 Pro on a same single prompt. Can we jump on buildings? Yes, but this was a fully functional game on a one prompt output. So you can see the difference of how things work and how they look. I don't know if I believe the benchmarks that have been coming out about Grok, given the tests that I've done here, as well as different things that I've been reading online about people using Grok to code. The output of the code isn't great, which makes me wonder if they are gaming the benchmarks, similar to how Meta was gaming the benchmarks just months ago and they got caught doing it. I mean, if you look at the AI code tests that I've just done, and I try to do these as fair as possible, it's just like one prompt, code, output, 
you be the judge of how it works, but in this case, none of them really worked. What are your thoughts on Grok 4 and XAI? Let me know in the comments below. Does it work better for you than it has for me in this video? And again, shout out to my friend who took my prompts, put them in, and gave me the code. He actually even sent me videos for each one. Just want to really simplify and focus on just the output. I truly think Claude and Gemini are still the best for coding today in a practical everyday setting. And if you want to debate that, let me know what your thoughts are below, which is the absolute best. If you enjoy content like this, don't forget to subscribe. I cover AI on a daily basis so you can stay up to date with the latest and greatest. If you like the video, it tells the algorithm you enjoy content like this and you want to see more of it. And thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow with another AI video. <laughs>